Hey, welcome to part five of the Laravel link shortener series. Uh, in this video, we'll be covering how to build the index page or the index Livewire component. Uh, just a simple table with some pagination to show the links that the user already has created. Uh, this is made easier by our database seeder, which we created with the factories, I think in part two of the series. So if you're interested, check that out. Uh, we've also got some a bunch of tests to make green because we're, we're uh, building in a test driven way. So that would be part four or part three rather, and in part four, we actually created the routes, the controllers, and uh, just basic scaffolding we need to get this working. Uh, this is the login page that you see on screen right now. So if I log in with user at test.com, which is what our seeder creates, and password, uh, you can see we have a basic dashboard created. Uh, we don't have anything set up yet. We just have a simple dashboard, login and register routes and pages. So if we look at the code base, what we have is basically just our route setup. And, uh, we have a welcome page, which I will actually turn into a redirect into login because we don't need a welcome page. So let's just redirect that to there. We've got our links index, which is what we'll be modifying in this video. The create, the edit, uh, the dashboard, which we don't actually need, I don't believe. So we can remove that because we will default it to links. And we also have our redirect link here. So it's like a catch all at the bottom and it 404 is if the slug that is provided doesn't actually exist. So that's a pretty quick overview of what we're building. Like I said, uh, if you're interested, just you should start from the beginning and you'll see how I built this uh, step by step. So the first thing I want to do is actually just go over what we have for the index, right? So what we've created in the last video is actually the link table, I believe. Yep. So the link table component and the link dash table template. So let me just put some text in here and we'll see if we can get this outputted. So link, oops, link table. And of course we need to actually change the slash dashboard uh, default to, to slash links. And in here, after logging in, we want this to go to slash links. Let's see if this actually works. So dashboard won't exist anymore, but if we go to links, we should see link table, which is exactly right. Now see, you'll notice that uh, this doesn't actually show any of the dashboard stuff anymore. And that's because uh, when we go through the web.php and we go into the index method of the link controller, the index method actually returns links.index as the view, right? And so index.blade.php is just returning livewire link dash table, okay? And that's not correct. It's correct in showing the actual link table, but it's not correct in our application because we want to be able to see uh, the Laravel breeze provided scaffolding, right? And so what we actually need to do is go into our dashboard.blade.php and just copy this because this is the actual like HTML and, and blade components that make the layout look the way it does. Kind of tough to explain, but um, that's, we need this. And then within this component, the X app layout, which is just the app layout component, we can output our link table here, save this. So now basically what we've done is we, we've wrapped our live wire link dash table component with the uh, Laravel breeze kind of scaffolding uh, the, the, the layout app layout, which uses the app.blade.php file uh, and is slotted in right here. So we have all the styles and everything works. And if we reload our page, we're going to get a route dashboard not defined. So this is caused by the uh, route dashboard literally not being defined. And it's uh, defined in a lot of places, navigation.blade.php and app.blade.php. You've got two ways to really go about this. You can either uh, literally change the route within the blade files to just replace dashboard with links, which is probably what I'm going to do. Or you can just create a redirect from the dashboard route to the links index route. I actually prefer going in and just uh, replacing them. It just seems like a better way to go about things. So uh, we can find all of these and select them with uh, command D and it'll go ahead and do that. And then with the multi cursor, we could just replace this with links and that'll fix the navigation.blade.php file. Let's see if that fixes it. Yep, yeah, sure does. Okay. So uh, the last, the next thing we want to do in getting this to work after replacing that, that URL, you can see that we're actually on slash links here is just this, right? We want, uh, we could leave dashboard here, but I think this should say links, right? 
And now the reason, one of the reasons why I didn't want to just return LiveWire components within my web.php file, like instead of going through a controller first, is because I wanted to create the controller and then return specific views, in this case index, and then output that LiveWire component because I like to have this control over the layout outside of the component. And so this is actually quite easy. We can just go ahead and uh, not log in links. We can just replace it here. This section here is the H2 that controls this text here. So if I refresh now, it says links and we are well on our way. You could actually see that our component is rendering because we have the link table text here. And uh, that is the exact text in the link table template right there. So that's the first part done. We've modified the template outside of the actual component and now we can work on the component itself. So now I'm gonna actually go through and build the Tailwind and HTML stuff within the link-table.blade.php file, which is the component file, a component template file actually. And it's just gonna be some, some tedious HTML work. So I'll probably speed this up uh, and I'll stop if I find anything interesting to explain. worth mentioning that I actually took this table from Tailwind's uh, site, tailwindui.com, I think. Uh, it's one of their free tables that they, they offer uh, even if you don't buy their Tailwind UI kit. So I'll link that below. It comes in very handy. I actually really like the way it looks. So uh, that's going to be in the description. So I'm just creating the, the, the different column headers here. Uh, I needed six, but the last one's a little bit different because we are going to basically be outputting the slug and then the URL, the status, whether it's uh, enabled or not enabled, the redirects, which is the, the redirects count we store on the database and created. So that'll be a, a diff for humans, I think. Um, and then here, I'll just create a span with a class SR only. I actually forgot the table head, which is not good. Also worth mentioning is that uh, this is Tailwind 2.0. So there's going to be some new colors and stuff. Uh, I actually don't know much of what the differences are, but it's, it's very nice that Laravel Breeze already comes uh, like pre-built with it. Uh, within here, I'm going to actually create a for each loop. And I want to loop over the the rows, the data. So uh, I actually haven't even sent the data to this template from the com from the component yet. So that's going to be the next thing. But I, I just want this basic for loop to be done, so I know that that data is coming through correctly. And then we could get to the actual component work. So uh, let me just create this. We're going to loop over links as link, and then obviously end for each. So we need five of these. I believe this one's URL, uh, although we are trimming something. So the URL might be very long and it'll actually break the table if it goes too far. It gets kind of weird. There's like a scroll bar on desktop. It just shouldn't be that way. And I also have decided to wrap it within a div and give it a little bit different class uh, styling because I just want it to look different from the slug so it's not confusing. And obviously this UI is not gonna be perfectly optimized. There should be like a way to click the slug and automatically copy. I haven't figured that out and I don't think I will because I'm just using this for myself and this project is supposed to be relatively basic, but that's something I would implement. Like if someone clicks on this uh, table data, this this part of the row, it should copy the slug automatically like as a full link so they could just go and, and paste it wherever they want to redirect to. Here I'm just kind of like trimming the string. It'll, it'll limit the length of it. Uh, I think this is like a, the best solution. It's like pretty simple. Uh, it had to be done because the, the URLs can get really, really long. Within here, I actually did some coloring of like the active, inactive, uh, and it put it within one of those pill looking things if you ever worked with Bootstrap. And I just do an at if here with boots, uh, with uh, Blade to kind of check if it is active or not. So is enabled and then an else. And then we have end if. So within here, I'm just gonna wrap the actual status within a span, give it a class here. Um, and then within that put active. And the way I style this is basically just uh, padding left, right of two, 
inline flex so that we can style it the way we need to. Uh, text extra small, leading five, font semi bold uh, because I want it to pop out a little bit more, rounded full, uh, and I want it to be a BG green 100 and a text green 800. It actually looks pretty good when the text is a little bit darker than the background. I didn't know, it, I didn't think I would like it very much, but I saw an example of it from the Tailwind uh, table that again is linked below. I thought it looked pretty cool. For the inactive one, I uh, did basically the opposite. So it's still uh, PX2 inline flex, oops, text XS. That's not right. Leading five font semi bold, uh, rounded full BG red 100 and be, uh, text red 800. So just replace green with red and that'll probably make a very nice effect. Continuing on, we're now going to just output the redirects count. So let's see if that actually works. Redirects. That's just gonna be an integer there. I don't really, I don't think there's uh, any reason to style it too much. I did, however, make it text SM, which is interesting. Uh, I did build just the, the tailwind kind of uh, layout for this, so I was a little bit prepared for this part of the series, but I don't fully remember why I did that. So text gray 500 just to make it not so pronounced. And then for the last one here, I did PX6, PY4, which is the same as everything else. Uh, white space, no wrap. And within here, I actually did like a double date thing, which is I thought was pretty cool. So it's, uh, it's two divs, right? And we could just copy this and paste it. And within here, I'm gonna put the link created at to formatted date string, which is uh, like a really nice uh, human readable date format instead of outputting just the typical date time format that's stored in the database. And also I decided to just put below that the created at uh, diff for humans, which is gonna make like a, like a time difference that's very easy to understand, like three days ago, four days ago, two years ago. So uh, it's always helpful to have both. Tail and the demo table makes it look really good. So text SM, text gray 900. And below here, because I want the, the diff for humans to be a little bit less pronounced, I actually will make it text gray 500. And so that brings us to the last element, which is just like an edit button. So TD class, and this is gonna be PX6. So padding left, right six. PY4, padding top, bottom four, uh, white space, no wrap, text, right, text, SM, font, medium. And within here, we wanna just put a, an A, like a link tag, and link that to the links.edit. And also pass in link. And just to keep in mind that we're actually in, within the for loop, right? So uh, for each link says link, that means that this is gonna loop and we will have the link available and we will uh, be able to link directly to that named route. And the classes we wanna give it are text, indigo 600, hover, text, indigo 900. If we just close that up and make the link say edit, we should be done. So. I also want to include the pagination links, right? So we can follow the same way typical Laravel pagination links are output. Uh, the only difference with LiveWire is that we have to use a trait within the component to make it work correctly. So we can just output links arrow links. Um, and also here at the bottom, if link is empty, if links is empty, sorry, and if, and create a P tag with class of text gray 800 font bold, text 2XL, text center, and margin top and bottom of 10, no links found. So this message will come up if the links variable is empty. And uh, of course it might be if no links are created, so we don't wanna just show an empty page. It would look, probably look pretty weird. So let's go ahead and look, get into the, the actual component here, link table, and actually pass in the data that we're promising, right? So what we wanna do is add a comma here, uh, pass in an array as a second parameter to the view and use the key links. And this data will come from the off user links. And of course we want to make this a query because we actually wanna order by 
descending in order by the created at and then paginate 10 and like I mentioned before so that's the whole query there uh, the one thing I want to mention which I mentioned before is that we need to use a, a trait to make pagination work correctly with Livewire so uh, we need to use with pagination and just make sure that is actually imported and now if we reload our page moment of truth we see a really nice table with just some weird padding issues so uh, it could have been a lot worse I don't like how intense <laughs> this pagination bar is, so maybe we could switch it out for simple pagination. Simple paginate, let's see if that works. Yeah, that works too. Uh, it would be very useful to include a search here, so if anyone is, is keen on working on some Livewire stuff and wants to submit a PR, uh, I would gladly accept that, but we can see that the pagination does work and the table does work and our edit link probably will work so as you can see, we're going, going to edit here. And yeah, everything seems to be fine. We do have some weird padding issues here, and that's pretty interesting to me. Let's see if we can figure out where that's coming from. So I made a padding bottom of five of the container holding the, the live wire component, and then removed the padding six from the top and replaced it with padding two, and then left padding six left and right, and that seems to have fixed it. Uh, I'm not sure what this will look like on mobile, but we can sure take a look. Uh, as you can see, the padding left right of six doesn't really make sense on mobile, so I'll actually remove that. Let's do it only on MD. And that looks, well, a little bit better. So we could scroll sideways and, and I think that looks okay. What if we wanted to check if this active status looks good, if it's not, a, not active, right? So we can open up our SQL Pro. Uh, we can find our, our links table here and select, let's say, the, the ID number one, right? And just set that to zero and then refresh. And it looks like ID one is coming up here, which makes sense. That's the same URL. And that's what inactive looks like, which I think looks great. So in the next video, we're actually going to go over the creating the create and edit components. And I think this project is then done. Uh, as you can see, if I click here, it will fail or it won't fail. It just won't show anything because we don't actually have that component showing anything in its template. Out of curiosity, I'm actually going to go and run the test suite. So let's go back to our test link test and see how many failures we have. It looks like we still have 13 tests and five errors, one failure. And I think, well, I know for sure that, that all these errors will be resolved in the next video when we create the logic and the fill in the, the components for creating and editing links. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you are interested, the whole series is up. And so uh, if you want to learn the basics of Laravel, Livewire, and maybe Laravel Breeze, uh, I would highly recommend starting from the beginning and taking a look. So thank you for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.